Welcome. I'm Molly Mercer and I'm the Film Project Manager with the Cherokee Office of Economic Development. I also serve as the Camera Ready Liaison for Cherokee County and I uh, work through our office to connect Georgia's thriving film industry to Cherokee County as well as provide op educational opportunities for our high school and post-secondary film students and I work to connect our film professionals within our community. Today, we have a great opportunity to speak with one of our film professionals who is also starting to work with educational opportunities as well. So I wanna to welcome Thomas Cantley. Hi, Thomas, how are you? Good, how are you? Great, great, great. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Thomas is the co-founder, along with his wife, Ashley, of the Creative School Atlanta. Um, the Creative School Atlanta is a boutique school for creative careers with uh, an emphasis on placing real life training taught by current industry professionals and also offers aggressive post, post program placement for your students. So I want to talk with you today about what you're creating and how lucky we are to have it in Cherokee County. Yeah, well, well, thanks for your, giving me this platform to be able to speak about it. Um, yeah, we're really excited to, you know, to be in our area where we where we love and, and live and be able to create opportunities. Like you said, I mean, uh, our school was, you know, founded and designed based on my experience. You know, I was a film school uh, student. My wife wasn't. Um, she worked her way up in the in the industry uh interning and shadowing and whatnot but um my experience is i went through that typical educational program through you know your standardized film school you know secondary option so it's an intensive one year but it was very much like the college experience so i wanted to i didn't get fully out of the school what i wanted you know my i actually had learning disabilities and adhd go figure you know me so <laughs> uh, you know, everyone learns in a different type of way. So for me, I was such a hands-on type person and I, I, I needed something that was a little bit more customizable to me. So that's what we kind of truly wanted to create. And with my school too, once I graduated, you know, uh, I was, you know, I didn't know what to do. You know, there was alumni programs, but it wasn't even a program. It was just like alumni listings, opportunities, where to go, PA, certain things like that. But there wasn't like a heavy focus where I really needed that direction because I wasn't, because I actually went to film school. I went to Canada because I'm, I'm half Canadian. My mom's Canadian, my dad's American. I wanted to be in the US. So my school had zero opportunities for me to be able to go out into New York where I wanted to go. So I was like literally starting fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very intimidating for me. So, and, and I had no support. So for me, my experience of building that foundation was great, but these gaps of what they needed to fill is what we've created with our film school um, and program is to really customize that experience, not just drop them off the ledge, truly see through their experience, giving them the foundation that they need to do to succeed in the career, but also kind of shaping them into the direction that they want to go and then really setting them up with those opportunities that the relationships we're building to get to sustain their success so because yeah. their success and their experience is positive it reflects back on us absolutely so you've you've um, you've mentioned a lot and i'm going to dive <laughs> sorry a little deeper. no that's awesome that's that's um that is a great overview but to give for someone who's unfamiliar with the boutique concept, just tell tell us what that means. A uh, boutique is is more or less like because the school that I went to it was much larger. You mm -hmm. know, at the end of the day, we knew people in our class. Uh, just to give you a little story, I ran into one of my professors. You know, many years later, and went up to him on the street. You know, after I was working, and uh, he had no idea who I was. So. You know, the boutique aspect is like, we're really making our classes no more than 12 students. We really want to be able to have that um, personal touch in that aspect. So the boutiqueness is like, we're selective on who we pick. You know, mm -hmm. we're also very interested. Not everyone can just apply and, and get in. You mm -hmm. know, there are certain requirements. They're not heavy requirements, but 
we just truly want to be able to groom a um, mm. a a production level that's going to be you know coming out of our program. So we just want to be that exceptional smaller school, that kind of like New York Soho type feel. Like we just we really want it to be like you know not about the quantity, it's about the quality. Yeah. So you're, you're being very selective about the students you, you allow into your program. What process do they go to through to apply? So first off, they just go to our website and they submit uh, with, there's a standardized form questionnaire that just kind of gives an idea of where, where the focus is they want to get into, like just in the beginning, like whether they want to write, direct, edit, and then a couple other, um, you know, questions that they fill out, then it comes to us, it comes to our uh, recruiting specialist um, who kind of then corresponds with them, has a conversation, gets a feel mm -hmm. of, of them. And basically at the end of the day, when I say our requirements is truly like in production, anyone is trainable, but mm -hmm. they have to have heart, passion, and they have to have a hard work, hard work working mentality because other than that like if you don't have those and no ego just truly those foundations of a filmmaker you can go so far because like I said you can train them to be anything it doesn't matter I mean there's certain aspects that you need to have in certain areas like having a creative eye and certain things but those things can be taught and those can be learned but the foundation of a human being of just like truly like the ego aspects uh to the hard work aspects those are a little harder to correct because those are kind of ingrained in them. So like we've noticed in some of our students, we've had to uh, not accept certain students that have come in. And then we have others that are just, we can really tell by their personality um, that they're going to be a very successful student because, you know, the, the retention of students going to film schools and falling off and that small percentage of actually sustaining a career in the industry is, is a very small percentage. It's anywhere from one to 5% graduating classes actually go on to working in the industry. So how do you and, and the Creative School Atlanta hope to, how do you hope that your stats are greater? Like the, that your, how do you hope to connect them to the industry? Yeah, so once to kind of continue on that question you asked me about the recruiting process is once they kind of get past our recruiter, Doug, yeah. They have a conversation with us and we talk to whether they're a little bit younger, we talk to their parents, whoever's paying <laughs> and just truly, uh, you know, have a, a really raw conversation about the direction that they want to go. What do they see? Where do they want to be? Do they want to be in New York? Do they want to be in Atlanta? Do they want to be in Canada? Do they want to be in Europe? Like where, where do they want to go? And we really kind of dissect uh, an extensive conversation of like their vision of what they see, what they want to do. We talk to the parents. Um, if they have parents in this situation and just kind of truly tell them that there it is a lucrative industry There's so many different outlet outlets of where they can go and we kind of narrow down a little bit of a focus Of what they want to do and kind of do that last minute kind of assessment of just kind of going like is this program right for you because we just You know, we just want to get them give them the foundation and get them out and working, you know and Get them in those right placements opportunities. So did I answer that question? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, okay. so your school, though, it is not designed for many, many students to come participate and they all attend certain classes together. They don't all attend the same classes, per se. You tailor it for them. So how do you t explain how that happens? So, OK, so like the like we don't have a typical um, program style in the sense like what are other schools that are going, like whether it's NYU or uh, Georgia Film Academy, SCAD, anything like that. It's like your typical traditional, there's other typical traditional schools. So Monday you're going to lighting or camera or film history. Um, the way our, our unique structure and design of our program is that it's in the exact sequence of production. So the students come in, you know, we have an idea, we develop an idea. So it's like the true aspects of whether it's commercial, mm -hmm. social, social media, whatever, whatever route they want to do, or TV, film, reality, script and non-script, whatever direction they want to go. We truly give them that educational experience all the way through the process. So in pre-production, when those 
because uh, none of our educators are staff, they only come in when they're needed in that certain area. So just to give a, a random idea of, you know, an educator coming in is like a script writer will come in in the beginning, you know, and they'll be educating, they'll be working on them, working on the script with them and all the education there. They'll come in later too as well because in post-production, whether you're selling a script and you want to go down that route and stuff like that, there's multiple avenues of like the experience of someone coming in that wants to be a script writer. So that experience is tailored to them all the way throughout the program, but they need to really understand the foundation of how the entire production happens because we do an assessment in the middle and we do a check-in of kind of going, hey, you started coming in wanting to be a script, script writer, but now where do you want to be? You mm -hmm. know, and then we do at the very end, we go, well, you finished the program now, you've touched all the different elements of production and you know, you know, because I know I changed my career four or five times, you know, and still changing, adjusting things mm -hmm. uh, in current real time uh, always. So we, we don't want to just fully shape it and just give them that experience of just script writing all the way through because it's so important to know, even if you are a script writer, how you are a part of the entire process and, and every role is. So we just want to give them that full experience but also educate them in their, in their areas that they truly want to focus on. So giving them a broad um, understanding of the process so that they can communicate well within a production and appreciate Correct. what happens and how they, how they are to collaborate with those pieces as well. And then that goes into a more streamlined um, area of expertise that they are choosing for themselves. They, yeah, they so those educators will come in and they'll from mm -hmm. producing to production. Like one thing I noticed I lacked in my, in my education too was that what do you do now with your projects? You know what I mean? How do you distribute them? How do you get them out? Where do they go? You know what I mean? Getting jobs. So we have an intensive last month as part of the program where it's just all about, you know, getting, knowing how to market, how to sell yourself as well as your projects because mm -hmm. that's, one thing that's extremely disconnected in a lot of programs is it's not customized is truly like we all, like I said before, we all have different types of personalities. You're outgoing, I'm outgoing, but a lot of students and filmmakers aren't. So they go out and they graduate and they have the amazing technical skills, but they truly don't know how to sell themselves. And that's like one emphasis that we truly, really, really, really work on because you can go to any school that you ever want, but if you're not getting those foundations of that, structure and catering to you mm -hmm. to know how to uh, export your um, your amazing creative skills, then they'll never get anywhere, you mm -hmm. know? So that's that's another way to what we've really studied and looked at and retentions in schools is those personality types are amazing, but they're hidden, you know? So, and they don't know what to do because they need that work in that area, so. Thomas, I, I know a little about your background, just, when I first got to meet you, you were working on a spec pilot. You were writing, directing, and because it was a small project, and, and when you have a baby like that, like a spec pilot, you, you end up doing a lot of the jobs, everything from location scouting to producing and the whole bit, even though you then hired some team to come alongside you. But you have a, an interesting background from directing to producing, line producing, um, Tell us, how did you get to Cherokee County, you and Ashley? Yeah, I mean, like, like you mentioned, I mean, too, like I came into this career not knowing what I was going to do. I never in my wildest dreams ever thought I'd be a producer, mm -hmm. even a line producer, managing budgets and stuff like that. Uh, I just thought I was going to be a writer, director, camera operator, which I started at. Um, most of my career was in New York City, where my wife and I met. My wife is a celebrity Emmy award winning producer. And um, we just, I, I climbed the ranks and just, it was all about like my marketing skills. So for me, I, I, I did camera work in New York City, shooting for big magazines and people. And, and I, I came into the industry in the age in, in that like interesting time where DSLR cameras were, you know, the big thing. Like all of a sudden, you know, my first camera was a 40D. And it was able to shoot photo and video. Like before then, like when I graduated, we didn't, when I was going to film school, we didn't have these digital cameras like this. So it was, I'm dating myself a little bit, but I mean, I'm not even that old. So yeah. it's, uh, it's interesting how much technology has 
mm. you know, just recycled or uh, just changed and flipped. So for me, I was just an independent producer uh, or camera operator, DP and director in New York City and met my wife and we ended up getting, um, I won't bore you with all the details, but we ended up getting a pretty big uh, opportunity um, to come to Atlanta, Georgia. So my wife was doubling up on projects, uh, producing for Delta, which was um, located here, which kind of, we kind of flew down and checked it out. We're like, okay, where are we going to move? Because um, we wanted to get out of New York City because we were living in a 400 square foot apartment out on the Upper West Side. Um, and we ended up getting another gig doubled up uh, was the NBC Olympics. And so we had to scout locations in, in Atlanta and we kind of like looked at all the top little cute towns and Woodstock was like one of the top ones that kind of popped up. And uh, so we said, Oh, let's go have a drive out. Let's check this out. And kind of looked around and was just like, Oh my gosh, my wife's a big Hallmark fan. So we kind of looked at, um, we're just like, Oh my gosh, like our dream is to live in a little Hallmark town. And uh, <laughs> you know, we, we did some casting here and met a bunch of locals and, and it was just, it was the day where they have the farmer's market, like down by where Reformation Brewery is and everything. And we just kind of fell in love with it. And then we bought a house here, lived here. Unfortunately, the casting didn't make it for the commercial. Um, they wanted a little bit more a grittier spot in a pick and Decatur. Um, but yeah, I ended up kind of directing. I was, my wife was casting for those and I was directing the commercials for the prime time. Awesome. So you saw, you came and visited scouting for a location and fell in love with it. And you've moved here and have a family here. And we just, yeah. we're so glad you chose Cherokee. So what, why do you think Cherokee is a prime spot to open creative school Atlanta? Uh, you know, I, I mean, not only because it would be a hop, skip and a jump to where I live. <laughs> um, you know, I can take a little golf cart or a scooter down, but um, just, uh, I love the community, you know, um, it's just, it's, it has like a great friendly energy. I really like it in that sense. And then the fact that like, you know, I hate traffic, you know, I'm, I'm a subway kid. So, you know, being in New York city and stuff like that, I got used to transportation is a lot. I mean, I take a subway any day rather than going into the city. Mm -hmm. um, so for me being close to home, but just, not too far out of the city, you know, it's, it's not that bad of a drive. And because Cherokee County is so up and coming in the film industry too, it's on the map. So in that sense too, we're getting cheaper rent. Um, and, and the thing is what I find too, in a lot of productions that I work with, a lot of people say that they love getting out of the city. Mm. So a little bit of an opportunity, a taste of a different um, sense of just energy surrounding like, especially for the program too, if we're going off when we're going to be shooting mm -hmm. downtown and or anywhere, it's not like we're in the city confined in certain areas. So thinking of the long-term effects of like accessibility for our students to be able to have some diversity um, for locations and, and certain stuff like that and, and being hooked up here in Georgia and Woodstock um, definitely helps with that too, knowing the community and everyone and all that red tape and certain things kind of releases a little easier than being in downtown Atlanta or Decatur. Certainly. Yeah. There, and you're right. You're absolutely right about the diverse locations here. Of course, that's something we're sought after. People come a lot. Just think of the, the, the way Woodstock and Canton look so different and then ball ground <laughs> and yeah. beautiful campus and Waleska, you know, that like that iconic college campus uh, at Reinhardt university and, and Holly Springs has so many different little nooks and crannies as it's beginning to develop as well. There are just a lot of different fields around our county for sure. So that's, it is a great place location wise. We love that the film industry wants to connect here. And of course we love that you want to connect too further here. Um, I should mention Thomas and his wife both have uh, served as instructors at the Cherokee Film Summit for the last two years. And this year, uh, Thomas, and last year as well, uh, conducted workshops for the Student Film Summit. Um, it was just such a great pleasure to get to see you in action. And Azariah Oldacre, one of, uh, one of your staff members at, at the Creative School, uh, also worked with you this year, and you guys did a great job teaching those classes. I I'm curious, though, given um, our recent <laughs> worldwide pandemic, uh, a lot of businesses have had to pivot and to adjust 
to how they're going to instruct um, or how they're going to do business, whatever their business is. How are you switching up? I mean, uh, this, this plan launched before the pandemic hit, but you've already had to pivot it some. So what is that going to look like? Yeah, so what we've done is we've truly done a lot of research and we've been looking at what our, um, I wouldn't even say competitors, but other um, schools that are watching their trends of what they're doing, mm -hmm. we're, we're staying in tune with that. We're trying to abide by all the rules and the laws and everything because in production, there's like a lot of strategic planning and, and um, legalities of, of going forward with productions and shooting and, and being around a bunch of people. Uh, so we're taking those precautions in, but a lot of the major schools and through my community I've been speaking with are, have kind of committed to all the way to the fall about being 100% remote. Uh, and that's what we're doing right now. Uh, so our first program, what we've kind of designed to do is just kind of said, all right, we're going to commit to 2020 being remote. And that's what a lot of what's going to be happening with schools right now, um, just because there's a lot of unfamiliar territory. But for us, we don't want to be doing a lot of this wishy-washy back and forth and, and waiting. And oh my gosh, like we just want to like truly solidify um, uh, how we're going to all take this in place and how it's going to happen. So we've also, because my wife is a casting director and whatnot, a lot of stuff that she's been getting hired on. I mean, my wife has never worked for anyone locally, you know, in the last five years. And we've been here it's all been you know olympics everything has been ex all her projects on my executive producers my executive producer i've met them like two or three times on a couple different projects because they're in la or certain stuff so a lot of things are remote mm -hmm. um and a lot of trends as you'll see now too is like kelly ripa um her morning show i mean everything is being remote you know andy cohen all these other things and castings that my wife is coming into right now that she's working on with a bunch of projects are people who are content creators. Mm -hmm. So they're hiring people who can do their own commercials or shows within, you know, they're the subject. So it's called real people casting. So they're kind of, they're able to produce their own content, keep things to a minimum. But a lot of vendors are being hit hard right now um, because they're kind of doing a one-stop shop. So you're going your talent and you're shooting it. Um, mm -hmm. Because the trend right now is just that look, that, that, iPhone production quality, whether it's vertical or horizontal, it's social, but that's like the way of the world right now of how things are working. A lot of shows are being created this way right now and stuff like that. I'm involved in a film festival that's all shot, you know, this type of coronavirus um, type deal. So mm -hmm. we're really adapting our program within that. So with our program, as production is, is, is a lot of it in pre-production and post-production distribution, everything. None of it's physical, physical, like with a bunch of people, truly. So you can do a lot of that part of those pro programs on your own. Um, so we've kind of designed it like the other schools in certain senses where all that is, it's easy to be sharing screens and Zoom and interactive. And at this point too, you're getting a little bit more of a customized experience too. It's a little bit more Q and A's, a little bit more one-on-one um, -on -one opportunities. But then the opportunity too is because it's so current, the production aspect is we're kind of opening it up in the sense of, um, you know, every, every student's vision will be customized. So whether they want to create it um, and go out and shoot and, but take those precautionary measures and certain stuff, they will have those accessibilities um, with our team and stuff like that, but it will be very minimal, you know, or they can create the content internally whether they want to do an animation or anything like that we just want to also during this time in 2020 the projects to be very real time so that also challenges them because everyone in the industry all we do is we shape shift mm -hmm. it's and this is a great opportunity to create really cool content really interesting stuff with what you have so mm -hmm. And that foundation doesn't matter what camera you're using or anything like that those technicalities will still be educated in certain stuff um, we're just, uh, you know, having them in real time be put their own creativity to the test and, mm -hmm. and be current um, and, and really shape the projects that they're going to have for the end of the program, um, you know, so they're usable. And that's the thing, too, is like all of our projects, we don't want just what I found is like I never ended up being able to use any of my projects for my reel or anything like that. We truly want to shape the experience with what the students are being offered. 
um, something that they can use for the real or that they can sell or we can distribute or we can create it into something. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, the last bit, I know that you've talked about putting, helping students learn to put themselves out there to represent themselves. Um, we've talked about staying current so that, and learning to pivot uh, you as, um, in the design of your school, as well as teaching students to stay current and pivoting what they're doing to follow trend and follow what's interesting to the consumer's eye. What, how are you, how, uh, how are you placing students? What is your design to get students into jobs after? Because I know for the parent who's paying or for the student who's paying, their big question, especially in this time when a lot of people are losing jobs or, you know, our industries are paring down, how are you helping to connect them to that? So depending upon the focus so that way where they want to go, like I, I spend uh, an obscene amount of time in my post relationship connections mm -hmm. uh, with our on our website too. We have great spot um, our partnerships and, and we're, they're growing and growing and growing in New York, LA, here, everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, we're I'm interviewing them in a sense and just getting a feel for what they're needing. I mean, like I said earlier, is the shape shifting in the industry. Um, doesn't mean production is stopped. You know, I'm working on a feature film right now that I'm going to be on set, you mm -hmm. know, which is, makes me a little nervous and certain stuff, but they're abiding by the rules. So production is happening and, uh, and, and, and heavily right now is post-production. You know, I have a major need for a lot of our relationships. If someone's into post, whether it's sound, whether it's video or any, any area there, like, the places that I have relationships with right now are looking for people to be cutting things or small companies that I have and stuff like that are asking me like, Hey Thomas, any of your students like ready to do anything, you know, they got to go through the program first, but it's just the opportunities are there. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just shape shifting it. And it's a great opportunity for them to like learn and jump in right now because uh, people are like kind of desperate in the sense, the production people who are looking for really great people who are very versatile. Um, you know, and it's, and it's a great way to get in right away. So it's just, it's, yes, uh, we've been hit a bit, um, but things are moving. And like I said, with pre-production and stuff like that, mm -hmm. we're going to, we're through my industry professionals and friends, uh, conversing them quite a bit on the weekly basis. It's going to spike majorly because a lot of things are being developed and created right now in the pre-production phase and planning and budgeting and certain stuff. So when we, when things lift and we get a little bit of a green light in certain areas, it's, they're needed, you know? So better get in now than, than wait it out to, when, when, until like all of a sudden it, the lift comes and then everyone's scrambling and trying to get stuff right now, so. <laughs> um, that's a great word to end on. That's very encouraging. Um, we, we, we've started seeing a lot of activity here in our office. Again, the, the um, inquiries coming in from film teams. So that's very exciting. And we're certainly excited for you and all that you are planning uh, for the Atlanta Creative School. Um, for anyone who's watching or listening today, if you would like for, to get some more information about Atlanta Creative School, please visit creativeschoolatlanta.com. Oh, I was saying it backwards there just a moment ago, creativeschoolatlanta.com or Creative School ATL on social media or tune into their podcasts, Creative School Atlanta podcasts, um, where you'll find a variety of topics that you guys discuss regularly. Right, Thomas? Yep. Love for you to tune in there and learn more. Um, we're so glad that you joined us. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for choosing Cherokee uh, to establish your new school. And we are so excited to see how you and Ashley continue to connect and create here in our community. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everyone. Bye.